In this demo, we'll show how to leverage SolidFire's enterprise storage capabilities to create a production-ready MySQL replication clone in a fraction of the time that's normally required. The example database is over half a terabyte in size and would usually take several hours to clone and make ready in a traditional environment. First off, we'll need to get a replication point in time to start from. We'll go into the master MySQL database and flush the tables to get a clean bin log position to begin replication from. Then we show master status to get the bin log, file, and position. Mark this, we're going to need it in a minute. Now we'll go over into the SolidFire UI and create a snapshot. Name it something reasonable, like replication snap. And then we'll go back and unlock the tables. So well, while the master database is cruising along servicing the application, we'll go back over to SolidFire and create a volume clone from the snapshot that we just took. We'll go ahead and find our desired snapshot under the Volume Snapshots tab, and then click on Clone from Snapshot. We'll give it a descriptive name and assign it to the account that belongs to the new VM that we're using as the host for the MySQL instance, in this case, MySQL Read01, since this will be a read slave. So, uh, just for giggles, we'll go ahead and create another clone, since we might want to create MySQL read 2 as well later on. Um, none, neither of these clones will take up significant space on the solid fire array, since the data is deduplicated from the original volume, and there will be no real divergence at this time. Now we'll go ahead and log into the read slave host, which was creating using a VM clone operation, and we'll attach the new iSCSI volume. Um, so you can see the IQN there, MySQL read one We'll go ahead and attach it. And then we'll take a look, once that's done, uh, we'll take a look at FDisk and confirm that the disk is actually there uh, and being presented to the operating systems. You can see it there as SDB. And now we'll go ahead and mount it since the uh, FS tab entry is already there because it was a clone. And there's only a couple things we need to do at this point. We need to alter my CNF and change the server ID uh, from one to two so that there's not any conflict in the replication. And then as of MySQL 5.6, we have to delete the auto.cnf file, which contains a UUID uh, that's auto-generated on service start. So now we just restart the database. It'll go ahead and recover from the snapshot clone that we created. And now we can go ahead and add the replication information. We'll go ahead and add the host IP for the master then add the, uh, the master user, something like REPL or whatever you use in your environment. Uh, go ahead and add the, pa uh, the password. And of course this isn't the password, but you get the idea. Next thing we'll need to go back and take a look at the bin log position information uh, that we captured uh, at the beginning part of the operation. We'll need the bin file, in this case 09, and we'll need the position as well. So we'll add that. Then add the position number, 120. And we can start the slave operation. Replication will kick off. Now we can do show slave status. And we can see that when we take a look, there are no errors reported. And slave IO running and slave SQL running both have a status of yes and seconds behind master is zero. So all that indicates that replication is running as expected. If you've ever done a replication slave clone for a half a terabyte system, you know how long that can take. This was significantly faster and has a markedly positive effect on storage utilization efficiencies due to the block level deduplication involved. If you ever have to reactively scale a MySQL read array, this is going to be of huge benefit to operations. Yeah.